Nobody should have seen that shit. Swear it was brains everywhere. You won't believe that shit. Swear to God. Even made the kids watch. They had to see that shit. You lie, you lie. See how none of that shit was true, but y'all believe that see shit. Just fool, they might sell that shit to y'all, but won't sell me that shit. You, you a sacrifice. He sent you to get bodies. Basically, he just signed you over to the Illuminati. Sacrifice. He sent you to get bodies. Basically, he just signed you over to the Illuminati. Wanna see a dead body? Damn, that's crazy. That was let me let me just introduce and just you can say whatever you can or as much as you can, because I know some people. Again, I know even with them listening to this, they're saying, "Man, how about you tell us why you if you if you were the man as you with him every day, why couldn't you have prevented this from happening? And also, what happened? Obviously. All right. So, what happened that night? Unlike what everybody think, it was all. Spontaneous events. Uh, uh, was all spontaneous events. Uh, um, it's sad to say, but Vaughn at that time wasn't at the right place. I um, wasn't at the right state in his mind. You know, you guys could take it how you want to take it from there, but he wasn't in the right state of his mind. So when he had an album release party. Once we left the album release party, from there, it was complete confusion. The Vaughn travels with three to four security, armed security, because he's he a- has security. Of course he has security. He can't carry a weapon. Oh, he got to have security. He traveled with three, this is a superstar. You think we're not going to make him travel with security? He traveled with That's three- That's one of the big, big questions is like, wait, was he just moving with street guys? Why didn't he oh, have security? I had three, I traveled with one security that, moves with Vaughn and he traveled with two more security. You know what I'm saying? Vaughn traveled in a bulletproof truck. So all this extra speculation is about security and not doing a job. And not only that, his guys are security, man. He travels with 10 to 15 guys daily. And they and they protect and love Vaughn more than any security would. Matter of fact, I will put Vaughn's life in his guy's hands before I put on security. That's, that's how close they are. Those guys will lay their life on. Matter of fact, I can't even, I wouldn't even say what lay, they did. Two died of the situation. Yeah. And those two is not the only ones like that. All his guys is like that. But you guys don't know what happened, bro. So, you know, just, I'm gonna go on a, on a quick description of what happened that night. So y'all could really know what happened. We left Opium, which was his album release party. We're like, I think we're about eight, 10 cars deep, uh, 2025 on Honorage. Um, everybody mind leaving the club is that we're going to the hotel and the Airbnb because that's normal routine. Yeah. We, we, the, the, the club you went to, the after hours wasn't getting paid for. I didn't have no acknowledgement of this team that have no acknowledgement of. That was, a, that was a complete Vaughn decision. And he had the right to make those decisions. He, wait, wait, he hold, hold on. So, it, the, the the y'all left opium and went to a different club, which we didn't even know was going to act. Okay, so so the, the the club that's in that security footage is that's not opium. That's not opium. Oh, okay, that, okay. That's a that's an after hour spot that we didn't even have no acknowledgement that we was going to. Okay. So so really, everybody jumped in the car. Um, I drove to the club with Vaughn in the um in a in a in a Hellcat. So going out the club, he jumped into the bulletproof truck and it was him and maybe two, three, two or three more individuals in the drive. So everybody else that was with us driving to the Airbnb or mm. to the hotel. And Vaughn literally went to the venue by himself. It's, we got a call later from, from um, people in the car like, hey bro, we here by, matter of fact, I think from his DJ was like, hey bro, you know, we here by ourselves. Like, where you guys at? and everybody rerouted to that venue. So already confusions were already started because normally if we got an after party or we got anything we're going to, we know as a team, everybody know to be on point. You know what I'm saying? We're traveling with a real deal gangster, a real stepper. So everybody gonna know how to move. But from that night, I don't know what it was. Maybe it's got timing. I don't know what it was, but Vaughn completely went on his own course that night. So he didn't call no one saying, hey, yo, we going here. Maybe the message didn't get relayed. No, he literally told his driver he's going to an after hour spot, and then we all caught up with him later. 
Okay, so by the time you guys get there, mm -hmm. what's going on? By the time we get there, he was still in the car. Um, it was him. So he didn't he didn't go in the club yet, or no, no, in the spot. He he go spot. Remember, he, he he was in a bulletproof truck. Okay, so it wasn't no concern. He 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 was at the venue before. So we got there. When we got there, everybody jumped out the car, and we're like, okay, cool. We're thinking we're about to go in. And for some, like I said, this, this is, I can't make this up. For some reason, Vaughn wasn't himself. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. This is somebody who's more on point than security at. This is somebody, if I'm on the road with, I'm with him. Like, cause he, he know how to move. He know how to pick spots. Like, yo, this man is like, I promise you the, the best artist I ever moved in my life. As far as knowing how to conduct himself properly. But for some reason that night, it was all like, we, he stayed in the car for like 30, 35 minutes and everybody outside is cold and it's shivering. Like everybody outside wondering like, what's going on? What's going on? So people starting to go back in the cars, like all the honor rides, everybody was with, they went back in the car. So I went to the went to the uh, car he was in. I was like, yo, Vaughn, went inside the passenger seat. I'm like, yo, Vaughn, bro, what's going on? Like, you know, everybody here waiting, let's go. He was like, all right, let's go. So at that time, this is where the security come in at. At that time, we're, we're telling security, hey, it's time to go in now. Vaughn's ready. You know what I'm saying? We've been here too long. Let's go inside the club. So they do their rounds. They go inside the club. They check the venue, go inside, check the outside, make sure there's no threat. Now, common sense, if you guys know security, nobody cannot go inside a club with a weapon. No matter who you is, you cannot enter a building with a weapon, especially a, a venue. So being alert that we're going into the club, all security put their weapon inside their cars because we're thinking we're going inside the club. Now, right before we go inside the club, one of his um, one of his homeboys came to the driver's side and they said, hey, we seen so-and-so. I'm not going to say no names. We seen so-and-so in the car and instantly. In the car or in, in the spot? No, we seen, they, he literally, our car is right here. Yeah. And, and so-and-so put up right there. So you had one car, which is one car before. You had another car, which is our car right here. And you had other people parked, scattered yeah. everywhere else. And one of Von homeboys came to him and was like, hey, we seen so-and-so in the car. He's asleep. And he jumped up. I'm talking about like. Wait, wait. So the other dude was sleeping? Or like, so like or, 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 or just like, just not aware type shit? The other artist was, was sleeping, unaware. He, he just okay. went up to the club. You know yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna give nobody no name. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. He put up to the club, and I believe it was just him and his driver. That's what supposedly what it was. Him yeah. and his driver, and a McLaren or some type of car they had. So one of the guys spotted him, and they came to the car where me, Vaughn, um, BJ, and a female, and one more person was in the car. And they came to the car and said, "Hey, so and so's here." And Vaughn just jumped up like, oh, come on, let's go. And with that reaction being so fast, we're like, hey, hold on, hold on, slow down. I'm like, hold on, what are we about to do? Hold on, like, we got jewelry on, all type of stuff, hold on. Bro, at, from that split second of his friend coming to tell him, at, Vaughn was out the car. And this is somebody who's, who's normally, like I said, calm, collective, uh, look around all the areas just fill all the blank because he 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 been out here so he didn't yeah. know what to do for some reason that night he was completely off he jumped up jumped out the car by the time Vaughn jumped out the car I don't even think he knew where so and so was he just jumped out the car he bumped into so and so as soon as he bumped into so and so started brawling from that 1.5 second of brawling at one of his so and so accomplice came through the side of a white car that we didn't even know was with so-and-so. That's how unaware the situation was. Yeah. Came out the car from the side, like, like y'all can see on the camera, and shot Vaughn and me four times. He, I think he let four, five shots off. Vaughn got hit three, four times. I got hit in the leg, started bleeding, went went for cover. He was down. Oh, are, are Yo, you what's going on with y'all? Look, I'm back again. Yeah, I know. But anyway, I thought I wasn't going to do another video on this King Von situation, right? So when I saw the interview, I saw um, D 
DJ Academics, you know, do the interview with King Von Manager, right? I'm just going to point out a few things about it. I'm going I'm to try to keep this short and sweet. You know, every time I say that, I'll be talking for damn 15 minutes. But I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet, right? All right, so where I want to start, right? First off, I want to start with it's weird that DJ Academics sometimes interviews people. You know, there's been two big artists. He's interviewed XXX Tentacion and he's interviewed Lil Von days before they both actually died. And then he turns around and he gets this interview with the manager as well. Now, all right, that's out of there. Got that off the chest, right? So um, now we go to the interview, right? And you'll see where I um where I um I paused the video at like I think it was about at like eight fifty five because you know when I stopped going through comments on the on the on the uh, academics video I start paying attention right around eight minutes and at eight fifty five it registered to me and um my spirit. <laughs> that he was lying or he was telling half truths at right right when he started to explain the story and his exact words that um the entire night was completely spontaneous you know usually when someone someone goes kind of like the extra mile to explain something to be truth usually they lying and they telling half truths and not to mention that when he started off when he started to be begin to explain how the night went his eyes went up and he slightly paused. Now, there was a lag in the video as well, so the pause seems a little bit longer, but he actually paused right before that lag. His eyes went up like, um, you know, and he was going, you know, left and right with his eyes, you know, so it's kind of like body language 101. You can tell when somebody lying and, you know, the more, the more I become aware of everything that, you know, goes on in life and all this deception, the more you raise your discernment, you know? The more you put that trust in God and yourself, you raise your discernment to deceit, to deception in any form, even when it's coming out of a human's mouth. You know what I'm saying? You're able to read it. You know, just most people have that spirit, have that discernment where they can just read someone lying. You can feel it. You know what I'm saying? So um, I started to realize he was lying or telling half truths, bro. Um it just sounded like bullshit at the end of the day. It sounded like bullshit. Like you trying to, you know, divert the truth, tell some half truths, you know, to maybe protect yourself or, you know, just completely give a narrative of, you know, how you want it to sound or how, you know, maybe the label want it to sound or anybody, you know what I'm saying? Whoever had their hand in this shit because it all sounded like a setup. It's like him doing that interview confirmed it even more that it was a setup the way that he explained it. You didn't, ex he didn't explain it like good at all. You know what I'm saying? You didn't do nothing for me. You know, you did something for people who are sheep. You did something for the 93% of people who just looked at the interview. I'm glad you did that interview. Cleared it up, man. It was some street shit. You know what I'm saying? You boy, you boy, we in the street, the high go, blah, blah, blah. You're not in the streets. You're not going to know this is what Vaughn does, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing that once you sign that contract, you sign the empire, you sign to these labels, you know, and you know, um, you, you sign that contract and blood. That's it, bro. That's it. Everything, it changes now. You know what I'm saying? Shit that you finna do and you finna embark on in your little career path in the industry, it's all finna be structured and it's finna be planned out. Even your death, even your sacrifice, you know? So um, so with him, you know, sitting there explaining, you know, how that night went, it just didn't make sense, bro. It didn't make sense. Not only him talking, it just sounded like a lie. The entire story just didn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like how every single night they usually move in as a unit, you know, everybody know what's going on, where this person is going, where Vaughn is, blah, blah, blah. And then on this one night, this one night, this one night, Vaughn decides to just venture off to this after um, hour spot by himself, you know, or maybe with one other person. I don't think he clearly, you know, um, specified that, you know, so just this one night, Vaughn starts feeling completely different. Vaughn goes off by itself. You're the manager, and whoever else you with, probably his other like circle of um, you know, uh, his circle of niggas from O Block or whatever. Y'all don't know what's going on this night, you know. Um, 
it, it, this night is just a little bit is confusing. Those was like, you know, his words, you know, this is kind of a random night. Things usually don't happen the way that they did happen. This is coming from his mouth. You know what I'm saying? So that right there screams set up alone. That scream set up. You know, obviously it didn't happen until they got to where he was. But still, the way the night unfolded, it just doesn't sit right. It don't make sense. And the whole story of how Vaughn sat in the car for 30 minutes by himself before you came and got into the car to ask Vaughn, you know, like, yo, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. Folks waiting on you. You ready to go? You know, and Vaughn says, boom, I'm ready to go. But within the midst of Vaughn saying, I'm ready to go to the manager, somehow, some way, you know, somebody comes up to the car, says that Quando, which, which how he explained it, the car was sitting right next to him. You know, he said, all right, Quando is here, blah, blah, blah. So now Vaughn hops up again, you know, with more force to actually get out the car this time, I'm assuming. And he gets out the car without seeing Quando, just bumps into Quando, as the manager put it, bump, just, boo, oh, shit. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? Now we throwing hands. We tussling. We fighting. You know, we didn't get out the car and say, oh, shit. Quando, blah, blah, blah. You get out the car and bumps into him. That's how he put it. I'm not making that up. That was his words. You know what I'm saying? So that right there don't make sense. And then from the camera angle, you know, the way, all right. So rather you want to dispute, rather they came out of the club or they were coming from the side of the building with like, an indent that made it look like it was a door, you know, that's left up, um, that's that's up in the air for, you know, discussion or whatever, whatever you think it looked like. But from the camera angle, clearly they were coming from the side of the little after hour spot, you know. So, like I said, rather that's a door right there or there's just a wall. I don't know. You know I'm saying you have to drive down there and go see. Don't know. You know, so that right there alone um disputes him getting out of the car and bumping in to Quando because when what we got was the camera caught them from the side of the building we didn't get anything else next to a car the only car that was there right next to them fighting was that white car that buddy came from around and started shooting so that also is just like you know, it's kind of weird in itself on how he explained the story and how it happened. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's why as I was watching the interview, I was, you know, it just it just felt like he was lying, bro. It just felt like he was telling half truths and, you know, creating this narrative to kind of like pin it on, you know, Vaughn being off that night and just jumping toward Quando, you know, aggressively did whatever he did. You know, nothing truly was really explained. The interview didn't do nothing at the end of the day. And you got to remember, this dude manages Vaughn and he was managing and, you know, probably still is um, YNW Melly, which also killed and sacrificed his two, you know, supposedly best friends or whatever, bro. But he killed them. You know what I'm saying? But he... Buddy sold his soul over. You get the song with Kanye shortly after you do the video. And, um, you know, he did the Murder on My Mind video ritual and shit. They had the goats and shit. You know what I'm saying? Fucking chickens and shit hanging. It's clear, it's, it's clear bro. Clear. You know, they, they, they sacrificed chickens and goats. That, that was clear. If you're not seeing the fucking demonic activity in those videos and shit, and with all these artists that be having goats and shit and baby goats... And being blood and shit, it'd be real goat blood. You know what I'm saying? It'd be doing rituals around this shit. So he's the manager of them two already. You know, you already got two little demons under you that you managing. Clearly, he is in the works of what is going on in the industry. You don't get to manage them two kind of artists without being, you know, in the midst of the shit that goes on in the industry. Without signing some kind of agreement, you know, and... You know, just whatever. You know what I'm saying? You just don't get to manage them two kind of artists like that. You know? And um, and especially who 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 they was as people. You know what I'm saying? It just don't happen, bro. You just you just don't get to manage them two unless, you know, he he probably got something going on with Dirk. You know what I'm saying? Dirk probably made him his manager. Um, King King Von manager. You know what I'm saying? 
So, um, I'm at 10 minutes, bro. I wasn't even trying to make this video that long, but my whole point was getting on here just so, you know, I don't know. Y'all probably saw that video in the interview. Most of y'all who keep up with it, y'all saw it. So, I did that, captured them nine minutes because that was him explaining what happened, and that's where I felt like he was lying and telling the most, you know, half-truths and shit at throughout the video. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, y'all take it you know, how you want to for whatever it is, you know, whatever you feel about it. But, you know, it's nothing nobody could do to, you know, make me think any different. You know, this ain't me overthinking nothing. It's when you feel something, you feel it. And that's just what it is. And you can't, you know, you can't second guess what you feel. You know, you can't second guess like your intuition. You know what I'm saying? That's just doubling back on shit for no reason. You know what I'm saying? For no reason. Like, don't ever question what you feel in your spirit. You know what I'm saying? 99% of the time, that shit is true. No matter what it is. If it's a sacrifice or something going on in your life. You know what I'm saying? That's just, it's just what it is. That's, that's why we have a spirit. You know, it's there to tell us things like that. And to be able to acknowledge it is almost damn near a gift. You know? But anyway, I'm out of here, man. You know, y'all can watch it for yourselves, man. You'll see that he lying, bro. He, he, he telling bullshit. But anyway, I'm out.